All right, good afternoon, morning, evening, midnight, whatever you are at, what time you're watching this. Um, so we are going to start our next chapter, eight point, um, chapter eight, and this is going to be the first two lessons, our 100% review. Actually, 8.1 is review from actually Algebra 1, and you repeated it again in Algebra 2, um, and we're going to make it like just slightly harder, but not really. Um, so you've already done this twice in your classes. Uh, so yeah, most of this 8.1 is going to be a breeze. Okay, so we're going to be doing linear systems. All right, and so we, the definition of linear systems is just a set of two equations with two variables. Um, I highly doubt they'd ever give you more than two equations because that would just make it that much easier to solve. Um, but yeah, so you will always have two variables. That's the key thing to define a linear system is there's two variables. There's an X and a Y. All right. And so we have three different kinds of systems. And for those of you that took regular Algebra 2, and I'm sure Honors did it very similar, but if you took regular Algebra 2, you have done this topic already, okay? Uh, the three kinds of systems are the systems that have no solution. Then we have, I'm gonna do different colors. Then we have the systems that have one solution. And we finish it off with the systems that have infinitely um, many solutions. Okay, so it's just going to be one of these three kinds. Okay, and so you'll be given three graphs and you have to tell uh, which one it is. And then you have to classify it by a fancier name than these. And then you have to actually say the solution if there is one solution. So I'm going to go through each like each one and what it consists of. Okay, so no solution, the fancy name for this is called inconsistent. And because it's inconsistent, we don't have this common thing that happens all the time, which is the solution. All right, so uh, the no solution one is the one I just kind of remember. It's, oh yeah, it's inconsistent, so it's not happening. Something's not going right. Therefore, I don't have anything. Okay, no solution. All right, what it consists of on a graph is two parallel lines, okay? And because they're parallel, right, they're two lines like this, they never intersect, and so therefore they'd never have something in common, which would be the solution, okay? So it look like two parallel lines, the AKA never intersect, all right? And algebraically, what this looks like is you will get like zero equals two when you're solving or you'll get like five equals nine. Okay, so if you get something like that when you're solving it algebraically, you could know right away, oh, that's no solution because zero does not equal two and five does not equal nine. Okay, and so how this would look on a graph, if you're solving it through graph through graphing, sorry, it would just look like something like this. We'd have a line right here and then we'd have a line right here and Alex calls them line one and line two. Okay, and so that's what it's going to look like if we're doing it graphically. Okay, so those are the two ways you can identify if it's no solution. Graphically, you got parallel lines. Algebraically, you have something that makes zero sense because five does not equal nine. All right. Okay, one solution, on the other hand, is called consistent independent. And the way I taught my Algebra 2 kids to remember this last year uh, was independent. If you are independent, how many people are you like in charge of or responsible for? Or if you think the word independent, I hopefully you think one. If I'm independent, I'm responsible for myself and only myself. Okay. And so that's how I remember consistent. Independent means one because independent in my mind means one. Okay. So what this will look like on the graph, it's two lines that intersect at one point. And guess what? That one point is the solution, okay? And then algebraically when you're solving this, what you'll end up getting is x equals 5 and y equals 3. And the way you would write that is the point 5 comma 3. And so this x equals 5, y equals 3 is that point that would appear on the graph where the two lines intersect. They would intersect at the point 5, 3, okay? And so how this would look 
if you were to do the method of graphing, uh, so you'd have this line right here, call that line one, and you'd have this line right here, and we'll call that line two, and this, this point right there, that is the solution. Okay, so the point where they intersect is the solution. All right, and so wherever those two lines intersect, that's what they have in common, and that's why we call it the solution. All right, and then the last case is infinitely many solutions. And so the fancy name for this is consistent dependent. Okay, and so if you are dependent, you depend upon something else, right? So if I depend upon something else, I'm going to fully depend on them for everything I need. And hopefully that's maybe clicking, oh, infinitely, right? If it's everything, it includes everything, it's infinitely. Okay, and so that's how I kind of try to remember infinitely many is consistent dependent. Okay, and what this looks on the graph is really weird. It looks like one line, but in real reality, it's two lines that are the same line. Okay, and so it looks like one, but it's really, I graph this line and then I graph this line on top of it. And so doesn't that look like one line, but really it's two lines that are the same, okay? And so the reason why there's infinitely many is because they all intersect everywhere, right? On the line, they're intersecting infinitely many times, okay? And so algebraically, what this would look like when you're solving is it would look like, well, zero equals zero or four equals four, okay? So those are true statements. Zero does equal zero. So that means no matter what I plug in, I'm going to get something equals something that is true, okay? And so that's how you know it's infinitely many. All right, and so on the graph, what this would look like is you'd have this line right here, and we call it line one. And then we graph this line again, and we call it line two. All right, so that's how infinitely many looks. It's the same line, and it's because they are intersecting at every single point on their line. So there's infinitely many points on a line. All right, so those are three kinds of systems. And we also have three methods of solving systems on top of this, okay? Um, so our three methods for solving, one is way more common to use than the other. Um, but you have learned all three in both Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. And that marker set. So three methods to solve. Okay, so our three methods to solve. Okay, um, I'm just going to kind of do it in different parts. So our first one is to graph. Okay, now graphing works with every single one. Um, but in reality, there's sometimes it's better and sometimes it's not. Okay, so you can graph them. And when you graph them, you're going to have one of these three cases. And so if you get two parallel lines, well, then that's no solution. Okay, but you need to make sure that if they're parallel, their slopes are the same. Okay, if you get two lines that intersect, well, then you need to find the point where they intersect. And if you graph the same line, okay, then you just need to make sure it's the exact same line when you're plugging it in. Okay, um, so typically you're only going to use this when both equations are in y equals mx plus b form. Right? If they're not in y equals mx plus b form, then you'd have to move them into that form in order to graph it, and it just gets exhaust like it's extra work that you don't need to do. Okay. The other really key thing is you only want to use it when the solution is a whole number or will be a whole number, which is really hard to tell a lot of the time. Um, and the main reason why I'm saying that is because if you try to calculate this intersection point, if you're on graph paper, right, and you're just graphing it, and it comes in between the box, so say like it's here and here, right, how do you know exactly where that point is, right? You can't tell unless it's on one of the coordinate grids, okay? And so that's why you usually want it to be a whole number, and you have no idea whether it would be a whole number or not until you've solved it. So that's why graphing, you almost never do. Uh, some of you are like, well, we can use a graphing calculator. And if you know your calculate tool, let me go get that on my calculator. Um, so if you were to graph, and remember, we want to calculate something, there is an intersect button, it's number five. So you can use your graphing calculator to calculate the intersection. Um, but you have to be really good with windows. 
um, changing the window on the graphing calculator. You also have to understand that sometimes if it's not a whole number, it's a decimal. And if it's a non-repeating decimal, then you still don't have an answer. Okay, so things like that. Just make sure graphing's probably the last one you will ever do. But you can do it if you want to. All right, the next one is substitution. Now, this is my personal favorite one. Um, and that's because my high school math teacher loves substitution. And so we did mainly substitution. Um, in terms of what we're going to do today, this is the one we'll probably use the second least. Okay, um, but it is very useful when... One equation is in the form x equals or y equals. Oops, sorry. So if it's x equals something or y equals something, it's really easy to substitute that into the other equation. Okay? And if they're both that way, it makes it even easier. Um, but yeah, so make sure you only want to use substitution when it's x equals or y equals. Otherwise, it's just too much work trying to... Um, solve for it to be an x equals or y equals and it just gets way too hard because the last method is probably the one you have done the most in your time and it is elimination and it's because most of our equations are written this way and so that's why we do it and so we will use um when both equations are in standard form and what we call standard form is ax plus by equals c. And so they'll both be in this form, they'll be stacked up on top of each other, and we try to eliminate a variable. Um, don't worry, I will go through all three, I'll go through these two methods, I won't go through graphing. It's way too much work, you don't wanna graph. Okay, I'll go through substitution elimination um, with different problems throughout the lesson today. But that's our intro to this.